All right, so the newest raid, the original demon, is about to release on Global. So I want to make a more in-depth guide on what teams to use and how to basically farm the raid consistently. I've already done my three raids of the day, so I'm going to be playing this with randoms because I think it's a more um, a realistic, uh, you know, experience for most players. We're going to be playing on hell and hard because I feel like. Uh, if you can't do the hell difficulty because you don't have the units, hard is a good uh, alternative. Uh, I'll talk about my hard teams in a bit. <laughs> you already see the mono green, but hell is uh, interesting because we're bringing back mono red basically. Red Galfer, red Arthur, and Trader Melly, not red, but. Uh, you could, if you don't have Trader Melly, use Red Askenor. He is a viable alternative. Uh, although, if you don't have Trader Meliodas, you're probably going to get kicked from Random's Lobby. So maybe you can host your own Hells, but you might not be able to actually do from other people because you, you're probably going to get kicked from a lot of them. But you might get lucky. Uh, some people might not kick you because maybe they know that Red Askenor is actually a viable alternative. Uh, and in the back, you can either use, like, uh, Elaine is the best if you're using Arthur. But if you don't have Elaine, you can use Twigo for the HP, you can use uh, Red Jericho, you can use uh, SR Liz, where is she? Those are all viable alternatives, anything that would um, help him in any case. Uh, there's no real best, or, or, or Ragnar Quan as well. That's a good option. Uh, so, one person runs this variant, and one person runs uh, DN over Arthur, and that's essentially it. I'm going to be recording here gameplay of both sides so first we're going to use arthur let me get into a match with a random and show you how that looks like all right so uh got pretty quickly for random R doing this match uh, sorry doing this raid with randoms has been very good when belma first came out doing the raid with randoms was honestly pretty hard for me because um a lot of people just didn't know what they were doing but this raid is very simple uh, it's just basically crimson, but with way more health <laughs> and with damage caps. So red derriere uh, is not a very good alternative for hell because of that, because you want her to like do all the damage at once, but you really can't. So the side of red Arthur, basically what you're going for is level three. Now I didn't get level rank up. Both of you are essentially going for uh, getting the. Rank up as fast as possible. I'm gonna waste this melee card because you would have combined anyways there. Uh, whenever I'll be able to actually do it. Uh, we'll talk about the DN and what you should be doing when you're using DN when we get there. But DN in the first turn has to taunt. She has to, or else you can't win because uh, the demon, the original demon, disables you. So what you're essentially doing is making sure that the, the demon does not disable your Galfer or your Arthur. Neither Galfer is or your Arthur, or you're screwed, right? So, okay. Every turn, make sure to signal to your partner um, if you have rank up or not. And if you don't get a rank up in three turns, you lost. No joke, but <laughs> that it is what it is. You lost. Um, Oh, he's going for the... Okay, he got he got very lucky with melee cards, actually, here. Pretty good. We could still win, even if you don't get the rank up. But the reason why you lose is because on the fourth turn, the demon seals everything. Except blue cards. But he seals level twos. So you can't even use, like, a rank up to level three of Arthur. So... We didn't get a rank up, but we got an extra Arthur card. I could still, so I'm gonna signal to him that I have a level three Arthur, but I don't have the rank up. He probably, yeah, he, he got it, he got it. That, that it's, listen, I've done this raid, I don't even know how many times, man. If you've been uh, watching me on stream, you know, it's been a grind. So I, I basically know what should do at all times here. But yeah, the Arthur needs to make sure to level three, because again, next turn, he might kill here, because we're going to be very strong because of Arthur level 3, but next turn, he seals everything, and without the immunity, you will lose. It, it, he sealed everything for two turns, you can't do anything. You could survive, but very unlikely. So... Melly? No, okay, almost killed, it's fine. First phase, 
has a damage cap on hell, uh, so you can't one shot him. You wouldn't be able to anyways. He's such a hell, uh, large health bar, but you can't one shot him. Second phase does not have a damage cap, so we're going to talk about that when we get there. But we're almost done here. This is a ve the very like average raid experience. I would have preferred if we had uh, a much more cleaner one where we do get the rank up like first or second turn would be nice, but this is very realistic here. A lot of times you don't get the rank up for multiple turns and you might not even get any rank up and then you have to scrap in with what you got. Luckily we did get an extra Arthur card uh, and the Arthur in this situation should know that you, you need to rank 3. Uh, don't wait one more turn, you can't wait one more turn. I do have the rank up, but he does have level 2. Maybe we'll see if we get a rank up next turn. But phase 2. So the quirk of phase 2 is that for the first 10% of his health, he cannot take physical attacks. Or, sorry, close range attacks. Better, better said. Oh, okay. The end has a long range attack. And so what we're going to do here is his the end does the first 10%. And then we follow up with the next attacks. And the last 10% of his health, right, cannot take damage outside of ultimates. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what you need to make sure is that you do damage to him, but not too much that you drop him below 20, right? But not too little that you don't just kill him and drop him below 20. So we did do that. That's why I followed up with the Arthur ultimate. I could have actually followed up with the Galfer ultimate. It was still killed, but... You see that symbol right there, the, the gray symbol that was up there? That's, he cannot take damage other than ultimates. It's very simple, actually. When you're doing this uh, without having to like over explain it, it's very, very um, simple. It, it, it's just, um, you know, when you, when you speak it out loud, it makes it sound way more complicated than it actually is, I feel like. So phase three, it's basically him being beefy. There's not anything crazy about phase three. He just does a ton of damage to you. So you want to kill him as fast as possible. Uh, second turn, I believe he buffs himself and he increases his pierce and his attack. So again, when you get to phase three, you're just trying your hardest to kill him as fast as possible. And so long as you kill him in one or two turns, it's okay. So getting lucky with cards is... Uh, is good. So, uh, yeah, th this was a pretty... Oh my god, okay. I <laughs> not very good cards, but we can... We can... Um, at least level 2 with Arthur for his Meliodas, perhaps. Uh, but he, yeah, he does a ton of damage to you. His Guffer is dead. My Guffer is dead. Yeah, my Guffer is dead. Maybe we'll get melee cards then. But yeah, you see that? That was one turn that he just eviscerated most of our characters. So you, um... Oh my god, look at these cards. <laughs> oh, but he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Now let's use the end. And be on the DN side of things. Oh, how, much, how much are we getting? How many drops? It should be only raid mats. Like, costume upgrade materials are cool, but I want the raid mats way more, man. Alright, so now we're gonna be on the roll of DN. And uh, my DN, I've been running her with attack crit. But for most of you, if you already have her with HP defense, there's no reason to make new gear for her. Just use the HP defense. I just use attack crit for the most damage possible. Uh, because the end is not only your tank, but also one of your damage dealers on both teams, right? So the end cannot be replaced. Um, you know, when we're talking about doing this raid on hell, th this is the structure for now. There will be teams in the future, probably. Maybe. We don't know. That will be better than what we have currently, but for now, for hell, one person uses Arthur, one person uses DN. DN is really big, and it's not a case of, oh, can I just use a different tank? Technically, yes, you can use a different tank, but the issue lies where DN is the only tank that can actually tank. Uh, the demon does a ton of damage with your single targets and the thing is that the end 
can tank it because she got 40% damage reduction and she has damage reduction from the raid. She was given damage reduction. She has strong, you know, the Texas is strong. She has that. She was given extra damage reduction and that's why she's the best tank. And not only she's the best tank, right? She also, as we saw before with the, uh, the other raid we did, she is huge, huge because she has the long range. So here, we're gonna uh, do this. Boom, hopefully we get the end cards next turn. I actually uh, don't recommend doing what I did and using the single target for the end in the first turn here. I only did that to combine cards to have more space for the chance of getting a rank up for us. Uh, but saving your single target for the end is essential for the second phase because, again, you're going to be the one doing the first attack and doing the first 10% of damage. It's huge. So hopefully we get one. We did not. We're going to go for her ultimate then. And that's going to be what we're going to do. Um, but yeah, it, it's huge that you do that. And again, I only did that because I wanted more space. But if I didn't get the extra attack for Guffer there, I wouldn't. So the end is crucial. One person has to run the end, and if you don't have the end, just be the Arthur. And if you don't, if you don't have the end, and the other person also doesn't have the end, just don't do it with them. Do it with someone else. It, for now, it is what it is. You know, uh, there's not much we can do about that. So we're gonna go for the DN ultimate here, and we're gonna make sure that he dies. My teammate here probably got very decent uh, Melios cards as well, which is nice. Uh, again. We're going to be opening up with the ultimate, because ultimates count as long-range attacks. Or they just they just bypass being long-range or, like, close. So we don't have to worry about it. So we're going to open up with the ultimate. And then now Meliodas can actually do damage. Uh, we will finish off here for our teammate. So... Uh, Deanna will do a ton of damage because she's 6-6, six, six, but a normal DN 1-6 does enough damage. Yeah, I did too much damage, I think. He might drop a little 10 with the AoEs. No, he won't, okay. Uh, yeah, that's way more damage than a, like a normal DN would do. Like a 1-6 DN with HP defense will do like around 10% of his health bar with her ultimate. My DN at 6-6 six, six with attack crit does... <laughs> Uh, like half his health. <laughs> and that's why I am mainly the DN, actually. When I do this raid, I am uh, usually the DN. I've been doing the raid constantly on stream with uh, with people, right? And uh, they usually join me as Arthur, and I'm the DN. And I fulfill the role of DN, and it works out pretty well. So yeah, again, phase three, we just uh, go for the kill as soon as possible. So if you do have DN, I recommend that you do build her up for the raid because it's going to be much easier for you to do with randoms because most people are going to be running Arthur. A lot of people are going to be running the end as well, you know? But most people are going to be running Arthur, so if you just want to uh, be guaranteed that you are going to be getting uh, intro raids with randoms and not get kicked, having having your DN already built up is good. But if you, you know, if you join someone's invite and they don't have DN and you don't have DN either, just, again, do it with someone else. It, it's simple, basically. All right, so we've, we've spent this whole video talking about hell. But what about the other difficulties? What should I run? Now, if you're doing extreme, you're gonna be running the same strategy. It, maybe you have only level 80 characters, so maybe you want to do extreme because of that. I do recommend that if you're going to do extreme, you might as well do hell. The difference is really not that big between extreme and hell. He still has three health bars on extreme, just like hell anyway, so you might as well do hell. If you're not going to do extreme, but you're going to do normal or hard, because that's just where you are, where you are in the game, I highly recommend that if it's possible for you to, run, to be the person running mono green. This has been giving me consistent two-turn wipes in the boss. We're going to be doing that right now. So, <laughs> on normal and hard, Merlin is phenomenal. And you don't even have to run this setup exactly, but just be know that Merlin is phenomenal because the boss takes extra damage from power strike. And so, on hard, she one-shots the phase one. 
And every single time I use it, because no one's running this. I have not seen a single person running this. I don't, I don't know why people have just not figured this out about the, uh, the easier difficulties. Merlin just one shots. And so if you rank during the first turn, you just one shot phase one, and then second second phase, you both just go to town and just destroy him in one turn as well. Uh, so I highly recommend for normal and hard to run Dn, sorry, to run Merlin instead of running like a Dn or something. Um, you still probably want to run Arthur uh, on normal and hard, but if you can run this setup, is really good. We're going to be talking about not running this setup as well, but just. Give me a second, I'm gonna run an example. Okay, um, this is the first person who uh, accepted me. He's using Margaret, but it's okay. <laughs> this is not what I would recommend running. I would recommend running Arthur uh, over Margaret, but Margaret will do. So this build right here is really, oh, I have, I have was I using CC food this whole time? <gasps> this build is really interesting. Because we guarantee ourselves a rank up in the first turn, right? And we rank up, they rank up, they get a level 3 Arthur, in this case I guess I'm Margaret, and uh, we one-shot with the Merlin. Now, if you're doing hard, you don't actually need to run this setup, but if you get lucky enough that your teammate is running this setup, you're gonna have a very fast completion. For both hard and normal, the biggest difference between hard and normal is that the phases are reversed. On hard, uh, the first phase is the same as the second phase of hell, where you have to do a long range attack, and this is why Merlin's so good. Because she's a long range attack. So, let's do this. He does a rank up. He does the level 3 for uh, Margaret. We one shot. I hope he doesn't waste a melee single target. He wastes AoE, it's fine. Now look at him, I, I've, okay, I'm gonna obviously assume that level 3 with Margaret will allow us to one-shot. The level 1 with Arthur will allow us to one-shot, because she, um, at level 90, she doesn't one-shot one with no problems, uh, this first phase, but she leaves him with, like, 5% of HP. So maybe level 100 I would one-shot with no external help, and so we just kill. Boom. And this is hard if you seem. Very simple, very quick. Phase 2 has damage cap. So, we're, yeah, we're only going to be hitting for um, uh, around there. But it's okay. Because uh, it, it's, you know, low enough HP that we still just one turn it. So, run this. Listen, I promise you, if you see someone running this, don't kick the. I've been kicked so many times from people that don't know that this setup works. And I'm just leaving this as a PSA. If you see someone running this, they know what they're doing. They're gonna one-shot the boss. Um, but yeah, this is really good, but you don't have to run this. Alright, we got in. And this is... Uh, <laughs> um, my last example here for hard, because we don't need many others. Sauriel is the only goddess you want to run on this raid. And the reason for that is because, just like we mentioned with Lolly Merlin, he has Power Strike. I would still not recommend running him over Merlin whatsoever, but he works. So we're basically essentially running Hell, but much easier. We're both using Galfer. We're both hoping to get a rank up. I got a rank up, thankfully. We're going to be using it right now. And uh, in, the, in my situation here, he does have the end, so he could be the one to do the 10% here. But our Sauriel does essentially the same thing. But I would recommend much more to run either Lolly Merlin, um, you could run Red Askenor, or to run as well the um, the Trader Mally, right? Just like that. Boom. Ton of damage. Oh my god. <laughs> Those AoEs would do no damage. Only Power Strike does damage for Sauriel. Only Power Strike. Oh, he didn't put a Pertaunt. I'll tell him to go first. So I just... I, I'll one-shot with Sauron, essentially. Because Power Strike just does so damn much. Right, let me waste these. Again, Lolly Merlin hits harder. Much harder. 
but that's because goddesses uh, have 100% damage reduction, or he has 100% damage reduction towards goddesses. It's only the fact that Sauriel has Power Strike that keeps him from doing like negative, right? So yeah, let's um, let's get the R for ultimate for next turn in case we don't kill him. But our single target here does almost damage cap again. I am much more comfortable running comfortable uh, comfortable running Merlin, but Sauriel is usable if you don't have Trader Melly, Lolly Merlin, or you don't want to run Red Ascador, or you don't have the end. So that's usable, but not recommended. That's about it. I mean, the raid is very simple. Uh, much more simple than Belmoth. I do actually quite like this raid. I've done the raid more times than I can count, honestly. <laughs> it's insane how many times I've done this raid so far. Uh, and it's only been like a week and a half. Um, and, you know, this this raid does have, uh, I think, a, a good... Um, a good replay value because it's not very complicated and the randoms i get like like the hell randoms have all been great that i found on jp which was not the case for belmoth when belmoth first dropped it was a nightmare to do belmoth with randoms this raid of randoms is just fine so uh, good luck out there the materials are some so 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 many so i am actually expecting for this to be the last damage uh, sorry the last level cap forever in this game, and you, so you don't need to rush. Not that much, really. <laughs>